Maybe don't play cash. Maybe you don't want to play cash. I'm not sure. We're running out of maps to play against them. So they were hoping Mirage is going to be their new map to play against them. Okay, well, after these two performances, especially this one here, I'm not sure going forwards if they can even pick Mirage. Or maybe they have to start. Maybe they have to start practicing overpass or something. Yeah, they have to do something at least. They're waiting for train. So, so I mean, we have Dust Two coming up, and every time I see these two teams play Dust Two recently, we just see like, we see four orbs all the time. Like, both teams want to have loads of orbs. Um, what, what do you think about this this uh, this style of play on Dust Two? And if I mean Ali is not hitting his shots, is that just gonna basically cripple cripple them? Yeah, yeah I think so. The most important position on Dust Two is probably when you play the car and you're defending short. Like the crossover. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like it's so crucial that you hit those two shots when they're like passing, you know, the Gandalf yep. box. I think most people know what which box I'm referring to. Yeah. Uh, so, do you know that? Yeah, you, yeah the you, know, you know the Gandalf box. box. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because you shall not pass. Yeah, right. and uh, the thing is, it's a CT map now, mm -hmm. but it's also kind of a T map considering you have to have those ops as CT. So, so economy. Yeah, exactly. Base, you yeah. can get so screwed economy wise at CT. You, you can't go for those like SMG buys on CT Dust 2. Like, where are you going to stand? You can play defensive on it, it's impossible. You need those ops. So, it's going to be interesting. Yeah, absolutely. Any, any thoughts, uh, Robin? Oh, we can two? talk about it. You yeah, we can talk about, about, about Dust 2. <laughs> Yeah, on Dust2 here, I think, yeah, it's, about, it's the two AWPers who I think kind of the biggest impact here because for Nip, I feel like Alu on this map, whenever I've seen them do really well, he's always the guy top fragging and he's having great impact, like picking people mid, going long. The guy I think for Fnatic who can have the most impact is JW. Like this is a map actually where Fnatic themselves aren't that strong on the map, but he's very strong on it. He, he I mean, even when they lost to TSM at CCS in that first round, he had like 20 plus, maybe 30 kills even. So he can have a huge impact. And obviously, if Alu's going, then you need to have an op who can go against him. You can't just play rifle only. That's one of the interesting things about the last sort of six to eight months is that we went from Fnatic and uh, Envious, LDLC back then, being mainly rifle only teams. They'd sometimes have an op to a, a meta now where it's like if someone... Here's the thing that happened. It happened in 1.6 as well. We had rifle only well. But what changes it is when other people get dominant AWPers, then you need something to counter that. Otherwise, you're just rifle guys trying to pick an AWPer one by one, and that's not great, you know. So I feel like the meta game now is that every team, to a degree, does need an AWPer now. What do you think? Yeah, yeah I agree. Like, if you don't have an AWP to counter the AWPer when you're a terrorist, for example, you need to at least have, like, set smoke rounds. And then you need, like, the full set of nades just to deny the AWPer. We saw Fnatic having a huge problem with KGMB at the last CSS yep. tournament. He was just standing at that core position I was talking about earlier, and Fnatic didn't seem to have like a set smoke where you can actually like build a wall of smokes towards the A site, but they were like, okay, just YOLO out and just try to kill yeah. him, and it obviously didn't work yeah, out. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, I think they either need JW with an AWP or they need to have some kind of like set strat to counter the AWP from Alan. So one thing um, I noticed, which was very interesting, when I was talking to Devwalk when he was here, was he's, he's talking to me about um, his, his impact, essentially as a coach, how much he studies the game, and how, and uh, some of the majors when, you know, it's NIP and Fnatic they're often gonna face, and they have to be prepared. Yeah. So they're studying demos, and Dust2 was a, a map that they studied very heavily, him and Pronax, and they're lo looking for patterns and so on. They found a lot of patterns for NIP, they're able to exploit them and actually uh, beat them by completely counter them in the tournament. Um, Natu's joins as, as the new coach now, for NIP, do you think he's going to have as positive an impact as Devil? Because Devil provides a complete contrast to Pronax, and they can kind of switch the calling between them. I so almost think it's a bit unfair to judge, firstly, because he's only had a few days, yep. literally, between the last time. And then secondly, because Devil Walk played in Fnatic. He played with Pronax, and so he not only knows the Fnatic players, their strengths, but he knows what Pronax's strengths are. Like, from what I've noticed of when Devil Walk's behind them and he has one of those headsets where he can talk, is he doesn't, he's not the guy telling them, like, oh, and on this round you're going to do this. It's more like he's trying to look for things that Pronax didn't notice. Like, oh, hey, maybe we can do that tactic we discussed before. And it's more like he just consults with them, okay? Which actually, if you think of, like, real sports, you don't just have the coach, you have, like, the assistant coach and that's the idea they, they know other aspects and they're trying to be like a committee to get like the best decision overall so i feel like that's where natu could do that in the future because exists is a guy who can be a bit stubborn he's a bit set in his ways and he just decides he wants to do things so maybe natu can just add in some consultancy there i don't think he's going to like revolutionize the whole gameplay and redesign things so i think give him time before we can judge that yeah absolutely i think that's very very fair um any any thoughts on on uh, Devil Walk as as the coach and the impact he brings to Fnatic. Yeah, I actually heard he uh, <coughs> made a call for the T pistol round, so it actually seems like yeah, have a huge impact in the way they play. He did say to me uh, that um, him and Pronex have like great respect for how one another views the game, but 
but uh, they don't agree on a lot of stuff, and that's why he thinks that the dynamic works. Because sometimes he's actually able to say, oh, yeah. like, if stuff, is, like Pronax says, calling style is not going well. He says, you know, he has a much more aggressive calling style, so he'll he'll try something, even if Pronax doesn't agree, they'll try, you know, try it out because they're having uh, problems, and that enables them to to have that kind of versatility. And uh, I mean, this I mean, because Fnatic are, I mean, you know, you've, you've ranked them Thorin as as the best team at the moment. Yeah, yeah. Do, you, do you think that because coaching is kind of a new thing, do you think that this is something that is really going to be important for NIP in the future as a, a big edge for teams to get? I don't think you have to do it because actually two of the tournaments that Fnatic won last year was when they didn't have Devil Walker with them at all. When he was actually in like Asia or Australia or something, it was when they won Face It and when they were Fragmite Masters. He wasn't there for those. So they could win anyway because they have a great in-game leader, great team, great style. But like I say, it just adds like a little something extra. So for someone like Nip especially, it could be very valuable because it could, could give them a little edge to get them closer to Fnatic or maybe help them overtake Envious. I mean, Envious doesn't have someone doing that, and they're still a fantastic team. So I think at its core, you don't have to have it, but if you can, it's a great luxury to have. It's more like, that's why I say it's more like an assistant role, because it's not like he even has to be right all the time. If he just makes a suggestion, the idea is the in-game leader is going to take that information, and he's going to make the call anyway, but yeah. he just has more information. So every now and then, you'll give him something that's useful. If you give him something, and you know, from his in-game view, he's like, nah, that, that wouldn't be right for now, he can just discard it. So there's really, as long as you, do, you have the right dynamic then, there's not like someone in control, I don't think it can go wrong. So I think it's good that Nip's trying it out because they were a team that, like I've said, they were looking for some answers, you know. They tried all the different positions. They've tried different players now. They've tried changing the maps they play. Well, what's left to change at that point in time? Maybe like coaching or in-game leader. So rather than just yank out exists who's played all the time, they're going to try a different coach approach. So I, I think it's, it's the right uh, aspect to like, we have to change something. So let's test this out. So uh, a threat. So regarding NIP uh, at the moment, what would you say is is necessarily the biggest problem in the team? What, what what would allow them, you think, to get just closer to Fnatic? Is there something that's obvious to you, or is this like a lot of little things? I think they might be like too confident in the way they play because when they start to lose rounds, like I think Fnatic was up like eight one, they don't have like this timeout when they like talk things through. They're more like, okay, let's just go, guys. We're we're gonna have kill them or whatever. Just playing more kind of a like casual style, not really discussing the strategies. And uh, I think that's really, that's hurting them. So, uh, some people have, have uh, said to me that NIP kind of play a more of a gentleman's CS, where they're not trying to be very okay. abusive and exploitative. Of you know the, the problem with that though? That reminds me of a scene from my favorite show, Game of Thrones, okay. <laughs> Do you remember when that guy, Bronn, is fighting with the guy near the moon door, the Knight of the Vale, yeah, okay? Yeah. And he's representing Tyrion's honor in this, in this trial by uh, combat. And as they're fighting, he like knocks this guy out the door. And then this boy goes, you didn't fight with honor. And he goes, nah, he did. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, yeah. What, that's what I think of Nip not abusing pistols and all the stuff. You have to. What's great about Envious is they abuse everything. Yeah. They're not just good at CZ. Whatever is overpowered, they will abuse and they will go to the max. If smokes, if you can exploit them going through and the guy can't see where you are, they're going to do that all the time. So you can't just sit back and go, no, no, this is a gentleman's sport. That's totally unfair. You should, uh, you should only face your... It's not like samurais, like Bushido code, like you can't stab someone in the back. You can get <laughs> stabbed in the back, mate. There's some lessons for the kids. You can get stabbed in the back. <laughs> so stab someone else in the back before they stab you. Wow. And on that, not on in that, real life, that was a metaphor. Kids. Glorious it was a note metaphor. <laughs> from metaphor. Thorin. Yeah. That's so dark. You can you can take it in any context <laughs> you want. Yeah. Uh, we are going to be jumping into the match very very shortly here on Dust Two between Fnatic and NIP. And of course, uh, Fnatic already up a map, and this means that if, if NIP lose this one, then they're going to be facing immunity and. I'm sure that, you know, well, NIP, they've already faced immunity yeah. once, and, it, you know, they had a close call on Dust2 yesterday. Yeah, but now they know what to expect. True. The thing is, what you, what you didn't have before with NIP playing immunity is that you have that kind of like a wild card situation, that, that randomness to it. Now NIP, they know how to play, they know what to expect. Even though it's just that one game they played one another on that, on that specific map, they still get like a a feel on, okay, how do they like to play and, and stuff. And I think that that's where the NIP experience comes in, or any top team experience comes in like yep. knowing when to actually adapt and be able to adapt yeah it's gonna be a really cool i mean i think i think that actually also does uh pull a little bit of pressure away from from both of these sides because like well you know we're not we're not gonna face navi or something when we, when we lose you know we're not gonna yeah. have like a a really tough elimination game we're gonna have more chances in the tournament that's that's got that's got to be in their minds here the, 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 they're not they're not fighting for their lives oh yeah no for sure not and i mean if you think about it as well uh, I was also obviously I think f this tournament even though TSM won the uh, tournament last weekend yep. Fnatic is still the team to beat here and then even if NIP ma ends up first or second in their group they will still face off against well Navi's not out but you know one of the three and I, I don't think that really matters for NIP yeah 
uh, or for Fnatic uh, yeah. as well. So uh, just that, just that aspect again. So it, I don't think it really matters too much. Obviously, they will still like to win because uh, they they don't want to lose against Fnatic. Absolutely. Uh, oh, we actually missed the knife. Yeah, we're in, into the pistol now. So it's, it's a quick push into B from. Fnatic, uh, sorry, sorry, from NIP rather, and uh, Crims is going to be able to pick one off as he falls back out of the fight. So they're going to be having to play for this retake right now. They've only got a single flash for this retake, and it's on Pronax, who's quite far away at the moment. So they're going to have to wait for him. And they have to wait for the smoke anyway, so I don't think it's, uh, it matters. And JW is also being waited for in Upper Dark. He, he really needs to clear a path. If he can win this duel against Exist, that's going to allow a two-pronged attack into the side. But they're going to go in anyway. And so far, it's going to be Alu who's going to be gutting them, and so, as well as Freiburg. Two frags apiece, but in comes JW. Is there a kit somewhere on the floor for him to pick up? It's going to be very, very hard against the bombs ticking so fast. And Freiburg is going to go down, but the round will be won. Wow, that's such a great hold by NIP. Freiburg and Alu doing work when uh, Fnatic is coming with the... Uh, with the forklift. With the forklift. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Uh, is it? Okay, so again, <laughs> I, I don't really know who won the knife round. Maybe uh, Mr. Kadian can tell me. Uh, it would be nice to know. Fnatic. Okay, so Fnatic won the knife round. Right. Uh, after go after start the seat on the CT side. So that okay, that makes sense. Um, yeah, great uh, popping around by NFP. They're going for that long challenge straight away, but actually it's kind of working out here for uh, Fnatic, who they go for the full buy. They got a lot of frags, so they got the double scout in play. CZ armor, 57 armor. So good. Act actually, very well kitted out, to be honest. And it's going to be oh yeah, I mean, look pushing in. Look at the uh, Fnatic players or NIP players. I mean, Force on all they have 11 and 18 HP. Uh, it's not looking pretty, uh, pretty right now for them. And this, if Fnatic are able to win this round, they're going to get a lot of economic momentum. And that, that's going to bring the ops out really, really fast. So Fnatic, they really, really badly, really desperately want to win this particular round. Will have a pretty big impact into how they're able to play some of the future rounds. So Pronax is going to be up close on A long. So he's going to have a really good idea of what's happening uh, towards uh, the kind of T-spawn top mid area. Can hear any stepping if it's there. And of course, if they're going to try to A split, he's going to know. But actually moving up Catwalk at the moment, and it's only... Uh, uh, JW is up there. He's got a scout and actually an incendiary. Oh, oh, he chucks the incendiary. That's going to force them forwards past it. And Forest and Alu are really, really low. And the fire is actually still there, which is going to delay Pronax. Just a couple seconds for the backstab. But he's still going to find Get, right? He's switching weapon there. Forest and Alu left alive. No health. Bomb not going to go down. And Fnatic, they cleaned this up with three guys left alive. Yeah. Scout okay. pretty good. One thing you do not want to do when you win the T pistol on your on the second round where you know that Fnatic will probably buy scouts and stuff. You don't want to rush out long. It's one of those choke points where you, you actually need like it's su such a small area where you have to try and run out and that that's just gonna hurt you like real bad and Fnatic punish you for it. Just take your time. I mean even buy a scout yourself and if you're so scared of the uh, of the Fnatic scout and just peek mid, right? Just make sure he doesn't go. But yeah you see here NIP Ryan, yeah, just trying to get done what they can, and some damage would be really nice because that's kind of the situation that that Fnatic are in now. They they forced NIP into a horrendous economy. So Fnatic's main uh, benefit from that now is just to build up that money kind of for free. So if NIP can get some a couple kills on the board, force some drops, maybe that's going to be a small little consolation to keep them a little bit uh, closer into this one. And, uh, did I, are you? I found myself watching through. Uh, yeah, through <laughs> I'm also watching. I actually think that they managed to get the two entries. It's a yeah. I'm it, it looks like a three on two situation right now. Three on one. Uh, uh, Freiburg is now a spectator. Yeah, and okay, so they managed to retake the, uh, the bomb site. Um, there we go. All right. So <laughs> I think <laughs> we're trying something new here yeah. in the in the production area. I think that that, that was like you watch the game within the game to see so okay how does man. the game look like at. You know, it from Freiburg. From size. Freiburg, who's spectating <laughs> his teammates. <laughs> That's awesome. But yeah, I mean, um, they managed to get the bomb down. They managed to get the um, the two entries onto the B bomb side uh, by doing yeah. so as well. So you see here again, NIP opting to save once more, uh, even though they got the bomb down. It's just you know, buy some pistols, try oh. and keep the economy low. That's a good nade. Yes. That's a really good timing, actually. Very nicely timed grenade. And that's going to help out a little bit. Oh, Flusher didn't help. Flusher. More grenades here, but Flusher will go down in the end. But still four players. 
Uh, left alive for Fnatic, JW close on the flank, can sandwich them now, they, there's no escape for them. They're going to try to go for the cat drop it would seem. And uh, they're, still, they're kind of stuck on cat because JW's, they found JW now. He's going to back away a little bit and uh, the AK has been picked up by Get right, so he's going to be able to do a little bit of damage, but JW goes for the repeat there and he's going to get taken out by Get right, which is a little bit uh, annoying for JW. They'll lose that armor, but never mind. I'll even get right left over. What other damage can they cause here? Again, another. Every little kill is going to really add up for MIP. They need every edge they can get. Right next. Oh, pops the head of value there. Great stuff there from him. And now it's get right alone. And uh, it's not a huge amount of time left in this now. 35 seconds. And we do have Crims who's in upper dark at the moment. So if Garrett is going to try to go towards B, Crims is probably going to be able to spot that as Olaf has the coverage of middle as well, as we can see, and Pronex is on A. So they got really good coverage here. He picks the one good angle there as, as Pronex yeah. is not looking the right way. It's short. Now it's down to Olaf, and he's going to be able to pick up the kill. So get right, killed three players there. That's yeah. pretty nice. Yeah, yeah. I mean, look, if he wouldn't have done that, so look now, you know, the, uh, the Fnatic players, they have to rebuy. Pronex, he had, what, 7k? And, actually, sorry, here we go. Well, right now, JW, for example, he's zero right now. Because he had to buy the off, rebuy, and, and, and uh, everything. Oh, and now he's, he's going to definitely have absolutely no money if they lose this round. He's going to be on to, to the $1,400. That's all he's going to have, which is pretty, pretty huge. So that damage really going to add up if they're able to take this one. But the frags are coming back in the way of Fnatic as they make the push towards Long to try to claim some lives of NIP. Oh, wow. and it's retaken now by NIP. They've got A-Long under control. They've got Alu over by Catwalk, so they can really string together a nice little push together uh, up onto the A-Bomb site. Freiburg just getting the smoke onto Cross over there. As uh, Fnatic are kind of locked out of the site. We've already got Alu with the AWP ready to uh, take anybody out who's going for that rotation through Catwalk. So NIP with a good setup now. We have... Uh, it is, uh, but Olaf is actually flanking uh, Long Freiburg though. That was a massive kill by Freiburg. If he would have uh, gone down there by Olaf, then it would have been difficult. Especially knowing NIP actually planted bad towards Alu that's playing uh, with the op uh, on the catwalk. They planted very safe. Uh, so, so, I mean, if uh, Olaf would have uh, killed Freiburg on long there, uh, Exis would have been you know, stuck on site basically, and they could still defuse the bomb even though you know, Alu was still alive. So, um, One thing to note as well on, on this map particularly uh, is that JW, like uh, Thorin was saying before, you know, he plays really well on this map. The reason why is because he, this is a map where he can run around quite a bit. He pushes the long, you know, he, he peaks mid, pushes in, into tunnel. Mostly it's long area though that he tends to be stationed at. And then it's really uh, important for, <coughs> for NIP that they know that. Like, obviously they will, but just to keep an eye on it as well, even though they hit, if they hit uh, catwalk, just to keep an eye out because JW will push that and he's going to flank you really, really fast. Yeah, and they're going to have Alu now going for the timing pick onto Long. It's not going to pay off for him, um, but JW and Olaf Meister for Fnatic. They could save this for Fnatic right now because their economy is in shambles. It's it's terrible. Yeah. NIP could get a really big control of the match if they're able to, to get to, to make this B-split work. They've moved all the way up now. There's only one guy in that B-bomb site. It's going to be uh, uh, Crims as well. Actually, no, there it is. There's a second player just popping off the mini-map. Olaf Meister, he is going to get himself taken out, though, as uh, this push goes really well for NIP. Yeah, and Fnatic sh should just uh, save here. They don't have a kit. I don't know if Olaf or Crims had one, but uh, there's no point in actually going for it uh, right now. And since their economy is so low, like you see JW by the car on A, that's like as aggressive that you would want to go right now. Because again, you're low on money, uh, you don't want to end up losing your weapon. Yeah, sure, if you can kill off one or two NIP players, that's great. But you don't want to jeopardize the fact that, okay, we might actually lose our weapons. And you don't want uh, that to happen. It's actually, I don't think it's 2 to 1 right now. It says round 6 out of 30. I'm yeah. actually not sure. Of okay, here, okay. So it's going to be 3-3. Three, three. <laughs> I've never seen these scoreboard, scoreboard yeah, scoreboard yeah, yeah. Same. Bugs I, I'm getting a bit confused here. It's very confusing. Uh, so three to three is the score, as uh, Fnatic have uh, now been stopped and their money is looking pretty terrible. But of course, there is a uh, this, this opportunity now for them. Um, still with the uh, the orb saved, a couple weapons saved, so they can potentially. Actually, every round NIP of one has been been a bomb detonation, which is quite interesting. But anyway, Ali going to go for the timing pick onto long. Spots nothing, but the cat push is coming in as well. Yeah, but so this is very smart because Alu knows now that okay, there's no one long, no one long. Even though the flash, it's late. 
he knows like he's gonna call for his teammates probably can't walk so watch out for that that's why you see NIP playing extremely defensive all across the board here just waiting for either Fnatic to back up or just waiting for uh, playing a bit passive so Right, because you usually expect two players right quite fast right on yep. the angle, and then if there's one missing, that like, wait, why is he missing? Yeah, exactly. Is he, is he the, the call, the call going on? yeah, the call ha had been made that uh, they're probably playing catwalk, so they're probably waiting for a flash up from mid, uh, just to make sure they don't get picked here by, by JW. This is what I love about NIP Fnatic matches. Both teams are so good at reading one another, and you get these situations where it's like who who makes the first mistake, and the mistakes are so so few. I'm going to see JW able to, uh, to pick off Exist there as he pushes Catwalk. They wanted to get control of Cat and Long. All they're going to get though so far in IP is Long area. Get Right's going to push in. Oh my god, this spray long range from Get Right goes for the reload. Sprays down one more. That's three kills in a row from Get Right. Completely trouncing the defense of Fnatic. It's just Olofmeister on the back now. He's only got a CZ. And uh, Ali's going to spot him. He will actually uh, take Alu down with the AK. Oh my god, all of my are coming into play. I jinxed him. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, perfect position. Okay, Ali goes down. I was kind of hoping for him to die there, so actually, I get right, could get the ace. Yeah. Just so he has something you to brag about. And then he just that. gets massacred by Olaf. Just these, I, I just love get right when he's doing these like super long range, like full auto spray downs on like long to the site. Like, it's always so, like, get right. So iconic. <laughs> it's always so get right. Yeah. <laughs> it's so get right, man. Okay, so we got a double orb into play for Alu and Forest, and again, this is something um, I've I, every time I've seen these guys pl guys play, I see this every time. Just going for those double orbs, Fnatic. I'm sure want to get the double orbs going as well. Olaf and JW, but uh, get right, oh. it's going to be burn baby money burn. incendiary. Okay, what else have we got here from Fnatic? Crims is there close with the pistol, gets flashed off. So this is uh, good stuff here from NIP, making it really safe. That's what it's about, making everything safe with those grenades. So this is going to be cleaned up pretty well. And, and uh, we know Fnatic have got three rounds, so don't be misled by the scoreboard. So NIP going to be moving on to their fifth one. And clean round from them, building up that bank. You think uh, Fnatic is starting to get a little bit uh, worried? No. They'll never get worried. I they're mean they're it machines, it they're robots. Right now, it's only five uh, to three in favor of an NIP. So there's still a lot of rounds to play with here. I mean, seven, seven rounds left um, of the half. and. Fnatic actually hasn't had a chance to buy too often, and now you see Crimson going down because they're slopping. They don't don't want to make that waste that one smoke into middle. Yeah. Oh wow, Freiburg straight out in there, especially after getting that quick pick. He's just ran straight down suicide. Really fast timing, straight straight into double doors. They weren't expecting that timing, and now Olafmeister's got to come out with a frag. He's going to stop Freiburg, but look at this. He's going to spot three players moving into the B bomb site. Makes the call to his teammates, but. You would probably ex would you expect a save coming in here from JW and Pronax? They're quite far away. Yeah. And AWP on JW. <laughs> Again, bomb is down three on two. B is extremely difficult to retake. They're probably just gonna go up here, see if they can get that ex like uh, kind of like how I was talking about Mirage there. Mm. See if you get an entry like really super fast, and then you might end up going for it. But if you don't manage to get someone, then they're just gonna have a saving. So here we go. And they get the yep. kill indeed onto get right, so that's going to be it. JW running through the fire, wading through it. And he's going to spot Forrest. Oh, wow. Okay, that, that could have worked out very well for them. So it actually almost was better for an OP to, to lose get right to that grenade, to just get rid of the, the weapons there. Yeah, Fnatic. obviously it does help them. Obviously you never know, but still. It's like um, some, some some mind games you're thinking yeah. about there, Dan. Exactly. It's like, okay, we want them to push, <laughs> yeah, and then like we want them to kill Get but Right. If we, in the corner. if we lose this <laughs> round, we can like reset their money. <laughs> like, that's those situations, no one ever plans for that. Losing rounds is not how you play this game. Okay, so we've got the, the upper dark push actually from, from Fnatic with those uh, those measly pistols. But those measly pistols are not going to do all that much damage at the moment. NIP are really ready for that. So looking pretty good here, looking much more warm than uh, the first map. Yeah. Oh yeah, you can actually see that they can actually kill people in yep. uh, <laughs> this match, so that, that's good. Um, but yeah, it's always been NIP's problem. I mean, they tend to warm up uh, for the second half. Which is not a great trait to have. I mean, basically what you're looking at is, yeah, we're going to lose the first map because we're cold. Uh, and right. You know, we're not really warmed up. And let's just hope that we... Uh, <laughs> let's just wait for the second map so we can actually start fragging. Yeah, that's actually something I love about um, a lot of these, uh, these again, champion level teams. I brought up this point yesterday. And NIP are definitely case in point. NIP know when to peak in their performance and that's that's what makes a great team because there's always these teams that 
in the groups, they play like godlike. They top the yeah. groups, they get to the semis, and they fall apart. Oh wait, just sem wait. Who are you referring <laughs> to? <then? laughs> I would love to mm. know. Please, please tell me. Yeah, you know, that for someone, that a lot of teams. I mean, for someone that has uh, that probably doesn't know what you're talking about, like which uh, teams in particular. Well, I, I, can I can actually mention three. Yeah, I know it happened in Quake all the time as well. There's lots of players yeah. like this in Quake also. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's lots of teams that, that have been like this. Um, okay, well, we are going to be into the next round here. Double up for both teams again. So Fnatic finally able to really like uh, actually be able to afford that um, after losing all these rounds. So seven in a row now for NIP, I, would, I believe. Is it? I'm not sure they were scored, but obviously... Yeah, yeah no, okay, it's it's almost. Seven, almost seven, right? Okay, we forgot that they won the pistol and lost to uh, Antico. And this time, Olaf wow. Meister, wow, two great headshots there. Finds the first one on short, so this time they're getting picked off at the start of the round. They are going to find two early kills. And I see, oh my god, heads being popped by these orbs, one after another. And it's a uh, get right and forest left, get right's picked up the AWP. This is one of those really hard spots where you're two against five. What the hell do you do? Okay, well, well now you're <laughs> <laughs> well, <I> guess, five. <laughs> right, <laughs> that was awkward. Oh my well, god! I mean, if anything, it was at least it was a headshot, right? Uh, he's got like, the deal with it shades on as well on, his, on his on his player model. I was gonna say like whenever whenever I used to TK, I always TK get right, and that was the reason for that because I always did it in in style. Get right wants the ace. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that it was probably a nice headshot, even though yeah. it was on the teammate. <laughs> Deal with it. Oh, and this is why you don't let get Rappi coming up. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I don't even know. I don't even know where to begin with that. <laughs> okay, so uh, I'm pretty sure now it's gonna be a threat. Well, Fifth Iron at least get right actually hits the shot, even though it's <laughs> on his teammate. <laughs> you could even hit a barn if he even tried. <laughs> Don't, don't incite the trolls. <laughs> Come on, man. I'm sorry. You're inviting I'm sorry. the trolls. I know. Well, Freiburg is just straight up there. Over crossover. He's going to get himself onto the bomb site. So much faster round here from NIP. Trying to get this damage done really quick. But it's uh, Forrest now. He's over by a long. He's, he's alone at the moment. And it's just Crims who has now been left to his own devices towards the B bomb site as NIP roll on into the, the, uh, the A bomb site very easily. This will pick up Ali with the nade. But yeah. And the thing here, again, for, for Crims, like, he needs to try and go for this, because they're going to have to double save otherwise. Uh, so there's, yeah, sure, he can, he can just, you know, play it safe and, and save the AWP. The problem here is that since Fnatic won the previous round, and they end up losing this one, you see their economy, for example, right now. Uh, whereas, because then you can actually, you can easily tell who actually survived the round that Fnatic won and who didn't, based on the money. And you saw there for Fnatic that they actually had these two people that ended up dying that previous round, and... Uh, you don't want to reset the money bonus at that time, so going for it like Crims did is, is the right play. And we have Fnatic with three guys towards long. They're, again, protecting against any kind of moves from NIP. If they were to, to basically try to just take a fast long play, like, ha like they had done in the past, they would get punished for it again. But Olofmoys are going to pick off Alu, so really good start and something they absolutely needed to get under their belt, that quick frag here. And in the past, NIP... Again, something that uh, Fnatic research was, you know, they would lose a man early, they would definitely, they would often push in middle, that would be something that they're very likely to do. Uh, NIPs, after losing that match, where Fnatic abused that, have since kind of uh, left that habit, and uh, they don't tend to do that anymore. Uh, more often, they, they will go for short plays, I see that quite, quite commonly as well. Of course, they don't have long at the moment, so it's not obvious to Fnatic where NIP really are going to be going at the moment. So Pranax is going to be on the site. He's going to be pretty alone at the moment. He ha does have uh, JW helping him out, but he's only got a CZ. Pronax has to get the frags here. Going to go for the spray down, but that fire definitely making aiming pretty difficult. JW going to swing on through catwalk. NIP looking quite good, but Forrest is back to JW. Oh. He misses all the shots with the CZ. That should have been guaranteed, but it's Olaf Meister now. He's left alone with the AWP, and there's, n there's almost nothing he can do with it. Fnatic really need Olaf Meister to, just yeah, just to stay alive with yeah, this. Yeah, he needs to save this. Oh wow, JW. Had he had JW picked up that frag, he's going to be in a really good position. Um, there's no nades left on NIP f for them to abuse a low health. Yeah. JW is going to have an AWP. Olaf Meister can maybe come in from below. There's 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 op uh, opportunities there, but NIP now kind of doing to Fnatic what Fnatic did to them on map number one. Yeah, they did. And actually, you saw that a Pronox was actually the one holding the A bomb site for Fnatic, and the Molotov that NIP threw, threw towards the site 
actually worked in their favor in terms of like it's just yeah it didn't damage anyone but it caused the smoke when it, when the molotov lands you have like a like a black smoke coming from it pronax holding that site you couldn't see anyone that's why he had to strafe up all the way first uh ended up not killing anyone and then get right obviously they, they knew where he was if that molotov wasn't there i'm pretty sure pronax would have gotten at least one yeah and this uh well it's gonna be hard for Fnatic to get something done here they've got uh, the cz's I got the Fire Sevens armor. All of my Celeste alone with that uh, AWP that he did save. Now, NIP, do they read this situation correctly? Fnatic, I'm gonna get an opportunity here. And NIP do the smart thing. They react here. They allow Fnatic to make the make the push. Yeah, just play it. Let's say you saw their Freiburg. You're just waiting on long there. Because Fnatic, every single ra eco they've had, they actually pushed long the long area before it was Pronex and JW was you know out doing. Other things, uh, but this round was, uh, was good. Be, but they were ready for it at least. Good shot by all of Meister, but it's not going to count for all that much. Flush it now uh, on the AWP. Now Flush is actually going to pick up a fragment to get right, so it's a three on three all of a sudden. The bomb is not yet planted. Oh, yeah, shot oh him. my what? god, what was that? Flush it with the jumping shot. Kukli style there from Flusher. It's going to be Forest though to take down Pronax towards Catwalk to put it back to a two on two. Weapon advantage here for NIP. The bomb is down on the bomb site though. There is 30 seconds left to recover it, to get it planted. And the positions for Fnatic aren't amazing here. Crimson and Flusher both in CT spawn. This is really horrible. They do have with. a kit though. Oh, And NIP with two ops. It's a good plan towards long though, so Alu obviously have a very good position in, uh, in this after plant. So Crimson really needs to cause a distraction for Flusher or vice versa to allow this to happen. Flusher's gonna go straight in with the CZ. He's not messing around, he's just pushing very quickly. But Alu, reticle trained on the crossover area. Fnatic must know that Alu is holding there. Flasher, he's in with the CZ, picks up the York, misses the shot. Alu's going to take down Crims, and that is that retake completely foiled by the remainder of NIP. And they go to 10 rounds here, and we're on the last one of the first half, and it's looking strong for, N for NIP. Yeah, um, they seem to have woken up from their slumber. Uh, and that, again, I, I don't even want to, like, I, I, I try to keep count how many air kills Flusher has uh, gotten, and I think it's probably five or six this tournament, and that's obviously without a scout. Yeah. That, how? That, that was ridiculous, because both jumps, he got yeah. lots, lots of connections. I mean, sure, uh, you have the semi or you have the automatic pistol, but I mean, the chances of the recoil being that accurate uh, yep. with any weapon is, is absurd. I love that from Freiburg, by the way. Yeah, they had the double mid, mid coverage, double orb coverage down middle, ran down suicide, fast timing onto catwalk, and they're trying to get the, the bodies, there, they're collecting all the bodies there uh, up onto the A bomb site. Pronax is uh, left alive, but it's uh, really nice to see NIP abusing that really fast timing because they, they know Fnatic don't have an orb, so they can uh, move really fast down suicide. The bomb is going to go down by exist for the catwalk area. Wow, Crim's coming up with the 5-7 frag onto Alu, and it's all of a sudden a 2-on-2. Two -two. Bomb is ticking away though, and there's no kit in the hands of Fnatic, so they've got to move quickly if they want to make this work. And that is exactly what you need to get done. Oh, <laughs> there is another jumping frag from Fnatic. I'm done. And <laughs> I'm done. with plenty of time. They pick up the weapons. Fnatic are going to make it. Somehow, they're going make to make themselves another round. 10-5, to five, but still in favor of NIP. Yeah. 10-5. Um, Sure, you know, NIP would have probably liked 11-4 there, but um, time 5 is still uh, a very good half. Uh, Fnatic, uh, I mean, their their T side is good, but m they tend to rely somewhat on their CT side, and it just didn't. I mean, they start off well when the um, the eco that they had after NIP won the pistol, and then they they got a few more runs on the board. But I'm pretty sure they were expecting to get a few um, a few more runs. Okay, so it's going to be interesting to see whether or not... Um yeah, so this is the howl that I actually won uh, from Face It. Oh uh, my god. I had to do some certain things to win it, uh, which <laughs> we will not disclose <laughs> on the stream. Uh, but yeah, so um, uh, James will actually give that to me later. Uh, problem is that, you know, you get the trade uh, lock when you log in yep. from another computer. So, so about the contraband. Yeah. Well, we have the fast push here coming in from a Fnatic straight up catwalk. And the jumping frags coming in from JW this time with that Tech 9 flying around the corner. It's going to be another frag from him, removing Freiburg from Gandalf. If you're wondering what position that was uh, earlier. Yes, that is Gandalf. It. So, uh, Exist and Forest left over, but Fnatic uh, looking like they're going to be able to secure a good opening on the second half for themselves. And the, the best thing about this as well is if they don't lose anyone else, which they don't, 
Dude, I've actually got, got four kills there, but yeah. only Forrest got a frag, so Forrest can actually buy a scout, but there's, there should be, there's, no, there's not enough money for anyone else to afford a scout. And scouts on this map, on the second round, is always going to be like a quite a big danger, so, and he's not even going to go for it. Yeah, They're the thing go is, I've actually, instead. like, NIP is probably one of the teams that they, they don't actually buy that many uh, scouts. You see Fnatic do it, you see Envyos do it, you see, you know, pretty much all the teams does they it. They even saved, uh, they yeah, even went for a save. Again, yeah. it was uh, what we were talking about even yeah. on Mirage before, where they tend to, they don't buy the armor, they would rather just buy the pistols, take some uh, odd or cheeky positions. If they manage to get a few kills, they might buy some, you know, Peter fit this next round as well, but just to get some more money coming into weapon round. Alright, well they do have a man dug in to the pit area, that's Alu. Just uh, chilling over there, 22 health. We have uh, the rest. 23. 23. I had to. You had, you had to do it, didn't <laughs> you? Had to go there. God damn it. So, pushing up middle now is Fnatic. As they just have to try and just wrap onto that B-bomb site. There's two players in there. And uh, interestingly, we could actually see a couple of frags coming in for NIP. If they're able to connect with these these first uh, quick shots, it's for uh, Forrest, great pistol player. The flash is in, it's perfect, but NIP get flashed as well, and it's going to be Exist. He only gets one, actually, in that position. So there's a lot of potential there between Exist and Forrest to get a lot of frags, but Fnatic, they, they rise with only losing one per, uh, person, and that's, that's really fantastic for them. Alu is going to make it almost I another, but... Yeah, I think, the, uh, I think the outcome there if Olaf and actually didn't come from middle, would have been a lot worse for Fnatic. But just because Olaf came actually from mid, it had uh, NIP folks on uh, on the mid area rather than the regular entrance area and exist. You know that position is very very strong if you do have control over mid. But when you don't and you know they're coming from from middle up to B, then it's it's a pretty bad position. And this time uh, NIP was back towards long as their their response to the shenanigans of Fnatic and their poor money situation and. It's such a struggle, this Olaf just jumping around with that Mac 10. Oh my god, that was actually, I think he, I think he grabbed his head out of the air there with that yeah. scout. So good stuff there from JW, making the flashy frags as Fnatic clean up the rest of the players. It's just uh, like shooting fish in the barrel right now for Crims. Like really, really fast fish. <laughs> super good at dodging bullets. <laughs> oh, oh <there> Ali. <laughs> Come on. Does he even get money does for he that? Does he lose money for yeah, that? Yeah, well, uh, well, let's see here. You're well, no, okay. I think that I think that it used to be like that. Like I don't know if it was a bug or not, but if you type killing console, you don't get any money, right? But I think they fixed it yeah, when yeah, you yeah, do yeah. suicide like that. Like you're you're still supposed to get money. Yeah, and as Katie is pointing out, the uh, money situation for NIP. Obviously, this is the first weapon round for them. Uh, losing this round, they're gonna have to save. Uh, this is well, that wasn't even James Pitcher. Uh, and and I've or Fnatic, uh, their economy is is pretty decent. So even if they lose this round, uh, they can still buy next one. Yeah, they're gonna play aggressively here on. Uh on a catwalk, but again, you know, Fnatic probably going to spot that. They didn't see anyone on the long area, so again, they can predict quite easily what NIP are doing as far as position is concerned, and it's paying off right now. Ali's going to come out with a frag. He misses the flick. Olaf gets the better of him, and now Fnatic are five against two. Get right, moving fast up to the crossover area, but he's not got any teammates to play with, no position to work with either. Fnatic are all over him. It's going to be another frag for them, and just exist left over. So it looks like Fnatic are close to tying up the map. Um, 10 to 10 is uh, going to be on a save again. And they didn't lose a single man, uh, which is <laughs> that's that's massive for for Fnatic. I mean, look at their money, right? And the reason why, actually, I didn't realize this something now. I don't know if you realized. We have a new observer. Uh, there's someone that's been used to cast, but he's been benched. Yeah. Uh, and that is, of course, uh, Mr. James. Uh, I can't even pronounce his nickname. It just doesn't make sense to me. Uh, we will call him BBC. Um, I, I heard that's what Freiburg calls him. No comment. I don't know why. I don't know what it no means. Comments. But um, uh, but yeah, he is in charge of the observing for this map. Nice. All right. The well. Well then. We yep. got a forest. Uh, they're trying to tap some heads here. But again, they have anything to work with. They've got no no real weapons. They're just a couple of PT50s. It's big on exi on a on Freiburg rather. And I they don't actually stack towards B though. They have one guy long, and then the rest were actually around the B area. And they managed to actually deflect this push. They sent the Fnatic packing towards the uh, middle and A area. So we already have a man on a fact-finding mission into the A bomb site. JW covering the flank quite effectively. Orb comes out, almost goes down. 15 health left. He's got players from two sides trying to take him out. He's got to be really careful here. Can't drop that orb in that position as uh, NIP are moving quickly towards this site retake. Freiburg in with the D. Oh, that was straight on his head, but 
Always that bit of randomness with the, deag the deagle. And it's going to be Alu who is now moving back around to CT spawn. Going to get taken out by JW. That could have been so dangerous if Alu were just like in middle f one second faster when uh, when JW was fighting Freiburg in mid mm. there. Like he would have just just died, right? And they would have gotten the, the AWP, would have been a two on two situation. That w that was uh, winnable for NIP. Yeah, absolutely. That's, that's a horrible situation for NIP as well. That's kind of one of those. Uh, sorry for Fnatic as well. Almost a demoralizing uh, kind of position to be in. But but Fnatic very fast timing again. They have the uh, they have the AWP here, and there was no presence in middle from NIP really. So they just straight up onto Catwalk. Really fast timing, um, and into these Catwalk peaks. And you can actually see that Crimson has his timing onto the A bomb site whilst. They're thinking, okay, we need to worry about the middle timing. But oh, because this. of that, he's oh, no. first drops in. That's so perfect. Pronax gets taken out, though, and the trade is real. Alu now has to divide his attention between short, between long, between uh, between middle as well. <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> he needs to pay attention everywhere. <laughs> he does have to do it on, on long. They're all over the place. Got to think about all of it. And it's going to be JW. Hey, uh, hiding the smoke there, able to actually help all of us to pick up the kill. They're just getting picked apart. Yeah. Like, Fnatic is just having a field day right now on their T side. That was so cool from Pronax. That that timing was just too fast for uh, for, uh, for NIP to react to expecting. Well, uh, I think Alu actually did spot him. The, the thing is, that expo flash that Fnatic threw, he got flashed and then by the time you know he saw again, he was already down seat to spawn, managed to kill off Get Right. I don't know if there was like maybe some sort of miscommunication where you know Alu was like, oh, flash cat, you know, watch out. Uh, but then again, I, I like they changed positions on IP. Get right used to play long, where they changed now. I think it's still Freiburg playing long as of the two tournaments ago. Exist used to play uh, the the A rotate area where you saw Get right holding. So you actually see it's probably is it a pause? No, no. Okay. <laughs> uh, it is not. Yeah. I actually think here, like coming in, they have a save now, NIP. But this is during the time now, like after this round, where Natu should just tell his his uh, players, unless this happens, uh, to actually take a pause, you know, take a timeout, uh, just to talk things uh, through, since they're getting picked apart really on their CT side now. Uh, obviously, you know, exist with three massive frags with the five seven uh, might actually turn this round uh, around. Yeah, some of his beholds lately have been fairly legendary, especially from some previous uh, big big land tournaments. Yeah. He's uh, been having some highlights. Love, that's for sure. But it's going to be a two on three now. So the problem is for Anarchy yeah, really yeah. is they don't have any armor. And yeah. that's going to mean that the aim punch is going to completely rip them to shreds. They've got to get the instant kill. And it's going to be Crimson Flusher now just making their way back towards uh, uh, together to towards the A si side of the map. Flusher is actually just uh, just watching over right now. There's lots of time left to play with. So he wants to catch a rotation. Because NIP, they've got to try to like figure out what's going on here. And Flusher wants to capitalize, maybe catch one of them off. Guard wants, th wants they're actually going for that kind of a play. This can still be dangerous, though. I mean, since Flusher's all alone in mid with the bomb, and you see a Crims over at long, if Alu actually hadn't had pushed up into tunnel there, and he might have actually been able to catch Flush off guard. But there's 23 seconds left on the clock, and they got to get him move on. Oh, Flusher, he's going to hear the movement there from Ali, sprays him down, but he gets spotted by the next player. But this is it. Time is yep. of the essence, and that's the problem. Now Crims has to go for the kill. Can he catch Exist off guard? Oh, he pulls out the knife! Oh, but he still gets the kill, and that's going to be the round there. Exist goes down, and Fnatic can breathe a huge sigh of relief there because that, that yeah, was that a was really s horrible round from them. Yeah, them. it was. Uh, again, you know, for Exist there, getting four massive kills on the eco. He actually didn't lose a single, H uh, single point of HP, I think, killing those three guys into... Uh, in upper tunnel, and now you see he's, he's pissed off now. He's Good. like, screw this, buying another sniper. But he's not the only one, but Alu misses the shot that you never expect him to miss. And that's another huge problem here for NIP. Alu missing some of these shots. We saw it on, saw it on Mirage as well. Some of these key kills that he always hits. And now it's going to be a three man situation for NIP on the defense. Olaf Meister looking to just challenge and just be a nuisance. Draw some fire away from the guys in the middle. Slow him down. Oh. Bates out get right when he had the nade out. Gary wanted to try to catch him off guard, but it didn't work. And Olaf Meister is going to be locking down middle. Freiberg uh, gets a nice angle onto Flusher, but Exist has to save this extremely expensive weapon now. Yeah. What's happening? What's happening for NIP here? Is it just they're getting, the, yeah? I mean, the they're getting again? picked apart. I mean, you saw all of there going aggressive onto Catwalk, trying to get that early uh, entry. Uh, misses the shot, which 
Sorry. <laughs> I was like, I, I, yeah. I would do this <laughs> Let me just, let me just aim this grenade yeah. right. In. <laughs> this is, this is when you say a curse word when that happens. You're like, oh, <laughs> yeah. f. Uh, no, but yeah, missing those crucial, crucial fun. shots. Yeah, fun, fun, <laughs> fun. Yeah, let's fun. say that. But yeah, I mean, again, the round would probably look differently if Aldo had hit that one shot. It just causes like massive rotation coming in from the NRP side, knowing that okay, well, they're already up. Cat, Aldo's dead, uh, and then Force end up dying as well. Which he, and he plays the middle area. So shock and awe now from NIP that they want to fix this. But all oh, the peak, the double peak happening. It was completely unintentional from Fnatic, but they both turned the corner. A really important moment that should have been Get Right's window of opportunity to just rip apart Fnatic from the inside, but instead he's the one that goes down. And now it's a very favorable situation here for Fnatic. They can bring the bomb, they can take their time and get that plant wherever they want at this point. They've got four players to, to play with and they're sticking together at the moment. It's only one guy. It's a. Uh, well, it was JW who was moving up towards long, but that's that means that now they know where Alu is. So they can move in, they know where to look, and here it is. Alu with the AWP gets his first shot onto Olaf Meister. Now, if he's going to make a clutch, this is where it has to happen. Rattling off the shots, cannot connect one more, which would have given Exist the one on one, which would have been the key difference here. But so the bomb is going to go down. He's still burning. Oh, no, he's <laughs> yeah, 9 HP. And uh, there is the spray down of Flusher, finds the head. He can still make this work if Crims falters on the first few bullets exist oh but there it wow. is crims takes him down with the ak yeah uh i it's, it's just misplaced again from uh, you know from, from nip there alu he has the bomb side right he gets the he gets the first kill he knows that they have one player coming from behind uh and which was exist just hold you just hold you need to you don't need to peek the way you did just try and peek a little bit of the angle towards the bomb site and just wait for Exist to run and you know flank them instead of end up ending up going down, leaving Exist in a very awkward situation. Oh yeah. And now NIP they're on they're on eco and they're they well they're trying to buy what they can and it's going to be Pistol Armor Flusher just jumping past. Fry what on earth is going <laughs> on? Freiburg somehow takes down Alu who was actually about to kill Flusher I think who's running through the smoke. It's absolute chaos madness here on a long here from NIP as Fnatic try to take it over and JW is already up on the bomb site and. It's almost as if we're having a role reversal here. We've got uh, NIP trying to retake the bomb sites, which Fnatic have taken really fast into this round. NIP looking to go down 15 to 10, as Fnatic look very, very strong at the moment. And it, it does just seem that NIP got out, got, off, got out the wrong side of the bed today. Yeah, yeah, I mean, but you saw it last time as well. I mean, last time NIP played versus uh, Fnatic. You know, it was, a, it was a ruffle stump then as well. Uh, even though it's instead of cobble, it's actually just two here, which was NIP's map uh, map pick. Uh, they, it, Fnatic just seems to have such a great grip on uh, NIP. What they do, and you know what they what they can do uh, to actually counter NIP. And on top of that, same on Mirage, they, they're just not hitting their shots. Oh, are they gonna do it? They're just gonna run it into B. This is this happening right now? Okay, no, they're gonna slow it down. Forward almost, they're just gonna just run at them. Rush B no stop. Rush making. Rush B. Don't be noob, Rush B. No stop. But that's not gonna happen. We got Fnatic respecting NIP. We got Pronax pushing middle. Before the smoke goes down, he's gonna get the pick actually on to get right. And there's still two players left on the B bomb site though for NIP at the moment. Oh, um, Forrest missing that shot again. Like, it just can't happen. Again. Another miss. From Forest here, the nade e even has like more than enough time to g find its way towards Forest, and now they're going to move back towards A. So they've uh, successfully isolated and delayed NIP. They just a rota a rotation rotation is going to happen. It's going to take way too long. Fnatic have players in any kind of lurking position to take out those rotation rotating players. In fact, they've got someone outside of B as they're looking to push A. They've got a guy in T spawn still. Fnatic can do anything they want in this round. Plus, is just. What? Aldo? What? You see that? I don't know. <laughs> Ali, <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Ali, uh, he's gonna get saved by a teammate. He's gonna flash them back, and Ali is gonna be back in the realm of the living. He's back with us again. Gonna take down Flusher as well towards uh, towards uh, the double doors, and uh, JW's ready for the peak now. Oh, Meister as well. JW will find Ali, who definitely is gonna already uh, like going for this rotate towards B, but NIP they just gotta hold oh. onto the site, and they're actually able to do yep. it here. Frybane no exists. Time. Can you please explain this round? Because I have no <laughs> idea <laughs> well, what just happened. Silver noobs. They know Rush B sight. 
I well, I mean, it, I think that since you actually had Alu dying at at A there, I think they wanted that to cause the rotate from yeah. the B bombs, and then they would just walk in. It's just obviously it backfired. Yeah, you could. That's one way to put it. <laughs> 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 All right, so here we have a. Uh, I think the Noah stack in, in mid actually, uh, two players from NIP looking over the smoke towards short, and this this has such a high success rate. You'd be so surprised how often this works with that fast. And we've been seeing fast cat timings, and this time NIP they want to give them a taste of their own medicine, get it in the faces of Fnatic, and they get themselves a really favorable situation. But we've lost the player, I think. Yeah. We've lost a man. <laughs> we did lose a man, and it's uh, JW. Um. So what well, I mean, but yeah, you okay? So just look at that, like the boost you were talking about, right? Uh, NIP hasn't done that so far this game. So chances, th chances are, uh, Fnatic has probably cleared that area uh, yeah. countless oh times, yeah, and point. then it just gets to you where you know, okay, this one round, I'm just not gonna peek it, and there you go, and I there with it. It's really oh. cool as well. Oh my God, what <laughs> there we go, hip shot there from Crims, able to take down Exist, and he's in a one on two actually. He could win this round for Fnatic. JW is reconnected to the server now. And uh, there's 40 seconds left. He's just uh, holding the angle, hoping that someone is trying to flank him, expecting him to be far enough a dock, but he's not. He's just playing the time, and he's going to maybe get himself out into middle, maybe. I to actually has had the peak here. Oh, I think he must, he must have heard him, at least by now in there. He gets the shot. Ali won't miss that one. And uh, NIP, 12 rounds to 15. They can absolutely make this happen. By this round, uh, Crimson will just drop a weapon to JW. Which just happened. Uh, all AKs though, no AWP. Okay, so it's going to be interesting to see whether or not Fnatic can make this work the, with the AKs. They've been relying on double ults for a lot of these rounds, and they're going to have a fast long take here. No messing around, Fnatic straight in the faces again here of NIP. It is uh, Freiburg is going to get taken out straight away in this. Fast up cat as well. This looks really hard for NIP to hold. They have to be really good on the bomb site defense, but they're oh. getting completely crushed. Fnatic now. They've only got Exist to deal with. He's going to pick up the kill onto Flusher, but they've got the bomb down. Uh, any second now onto that A bomb site. And Exist will get eliminated. 16 to 12. Fnatic are going to go through. And they, they've got their two victories here. So they're safe. They're secure. And NIP now. Uh, they only have to defeat Immunity in the, in the next match to go through with Fnatic from this uh, this group. Yeah. Um, again, Fnatic looking extremely solid. Uh, even even yesterday versus Liquid, even though it seemed a bit easier. But uh, again, you know they they stomped NIP on Mirage as well. So they're looking extremely solid on uh, on the maps. And that's too, which we were, we were talking about before c going live in this game, is probably NIP's best chance of beating Fnatic on. Uh, but Fnatic, they, they show that, yeah, this might be our worst map out of the five best maps we have, but it's still a, it's a really good map for us. So, uh, yeah, NIP seem to have a very hard time against uh, against Fnatic, and especially coming into the game being as cold as they were on the on Mirage. It's basically you gave, a, you gave away one map for free, and then you have to try to come back with the two remaining maps that you, uh, that you currently have. So, sure, yeah, you know, Dust2 uh, is it, a good pick for NIP, and then you end up with Inferno, uh, which is also a, a great map for for both. Uh, it's just that they, they just came into the game way too late. Absolutely. So well, we have our analysts back as well. We've got Threat and Thorin here with me now. So let's uh, get the thoughts. Anymore. Now you can actually refer to me as Lord Thorin. <laughs> <laughs> my uh, scepter of analysis here and my crown of uh, justified ego. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, justified I told you for that I could win this series and they did. Now, I didn't know they'd win on Dust 2, I have to say. Yeah, you but I don't, think, I don't think anyone did after the first half. Nip had a really great... I'm going to keep this on the whole time. I don't yeah. care. <laughs> <laughs> NIP had a really good <laughs> first half, right? <laughs> NIP, very good first half. Terrace side. Uh, yeah, Eight I agree. Or so. Yeah, I think they were up like 10 to 3 yeah, at yeah. a point. And then those stupid pistol jumping. Yep. Basically, Fnatic just kept jumping, firing all sorts of different pistols, yeah. and actually yeah. winning rounds I'm as a result I can't of it. take you yeah. seriously right okay, now. I'll take it out. I just can't. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, like so yeah. yeah, so it started with Flusher. He yeah. did the jumping CZ through a box onto a guy who he could barely see. Seems legit. And then, uh, then we had people <laughs> jumping with five sevens, yeah. killing everyone, winning the round. Like, h how can you stop that? Like, the hitbox is so, so There's no counterplay to that, yeah, is exactly. there? <laughs> like, it's, it's not worth trying to shoot him in midair because the hitbox is so yep. fucked up in air. So Wait, what did you say? 
It's messed up. It's, <laughs> it's finagled. <laughs> it's all sorts of problems going on. These Whoa. sweets. These Whoa. sweets, please. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We're Actually, from Sweden. Yeah. yeah, we're yeah. I mean, we don't we don't even speak this, this language. No, no. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Like we don't even know what that means. Yeah. Ben, can you explain that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. What you're saying is you guys are trying to fit it in. Yeah, I mean, yeah. we heard it, oh, but oh, I was actually listening to all the rap way. yesterday. So are you going? He, he missed it. I listened yeah. to all the rap <laughs> yesterday, and they said that countless of times. They also said something else to start with, like an end, but, but I'm not going to say it here. I think that's Hi guys. highly yeah. inappropriate. Okay. Yeah, uh, yeah. But yeah, that, uh, the, uh, the F word there, it came yeah, yeah. up quite a few times. So no, yeah, there were a lot of uh, niggling details <laughs> uh, I wanted to address in this particular <laughs> game. You know. Oh, yeah, the quality of the analysis is just getting better and better. I know. No, but in this game here, one of the things I, ha I actually noticed that was kind of uh, disconcerting for Nip is that in this whole series, Forrest That's was actually pretty <laughs> subpar. And on that map particularly, considering he kept getting orps over and over again, his orping was dreadful on this map here. On, it was quite bad on Mirage as well, but you know, it's not a map where you, he had to be the great orper, but on Dust 2, to have the double orp set up that many times, I don't even know if he got past 10 kills in the whole map. Yeah. It was really a problem because they were getting ops, they were throwing them to him, he's buying them. That's, that's a big strain on you economically. Yeah, yeah, I completely agree. You don't really need the double op setup. It just fits some teams. And as soon as he feels like, oh, maybe it's not like an, an op day, I'm not hitting my shots, he can just go to the, the M4 style because y you basically only need one op to play the C2 on us yeah, too. Yeah. And you just see one of the things on the Fnatic side is just the sheer amount of luxury in terms of star players they've got. So JW doesn't even have to have a monster game here. Olaf and Crims do it, and then on the first map it was Crim. To have that one guy who it's not like a, the old Navi where like Guardian has to be carrying, Kenny S has to carry for Titan. They they can go many different ways, and it's such a versatile team. It feels like they can adapt to whoever's on form. Yeah, yeah, I completely agree. And they looked very like scattered, especially on their CT side when they lost that many rounds in a row. Like I saw a round where Fnatic just did the standard. Okay, we have good spawn long. Let's just take long right away. Yep. And like most top teams, they have like a set answer to this. Like, okay, they're taking long. Let's do our thing where we have like some set nades and stuff. But it's like NFP just threw some random flashes and just tried to rush out. But Fnatic was already in like the pit and they lost like three players in the matter of like three seconds after that. And also think of some of the weird plays that happened here. There was at least two uh, team kills, like the team kill where Freiburg killed, um, was it Alu who was jumping out along? Yeah. And he went through the smoke and Flusher had gone ahead of him actually trying to shoot him. And then there was obviously the get right orb kill. I mean, yeah, there's not too much to say about that one. And then the very, one of the most bizarre scenarios, I wish we could go back to that moment in the round. Do you remember for Flarum when we, we switched over to position of Alu and he was like looking between two people like, mm, left yeah, or right? <laughs> yeah. Should I? I'm not sure I know I'm supposed to kill at least one of them, but which <laughs> yeah. am I supposed to? And then he just didn't kill either. Yeah. And he ended okay. up dying. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was ridiculous. But that kind of summed up Nip's whole game there. Like what was going on yeah. there? I mean, both operas, so Forrest and Alu actually did just nothing with, with yeah. their ops. Like, for the whole game, it felt like they uh, so many missed shots and opportunities for them that just caused them to lose the game. Yeah, one round, their Al got boosted on short. He just went out and just like the most clean yeah. bullet ever. The guy was actually running to towards him. Yeah, yeah. yeah, And it just looks like he just was shooting while he was still running. It's like, it's he must be like nervous or something. Because I'm not sure. And you also had that situation where he was on the bomb site when yeah. the Exis was flanking. Oh and yeah. instead of just, he ended up peeking there when he knows, okay, I saw both on catwalk. Instead of just peeking, just, just try and hold defensively. If they actually try to push you, yeah, then you have the angle. But you don't have to jump up the box, get the jump penalty, end up dying, and then ex leave Exis in a one or two situation. Like, it's... It's just a place like that that just caused mm. them to, to keep on losing rounds and eventually lost them the game. This is the problem for NIP, though, because they can look so good against every other team. Like, if you put them against even TSM now, Virtus Pro, I'd, I'd give them good chances to win. Certain maps, I'd say they'd win on. Maybe they'd even win the series. But against Envious, okay, they got that win over Envious at CCS. But before that, Envious had this great streak of, like, four series they were winning. All this year, they've played four series now against Fnatic. They only won the first one with Makaleli. They changed. They've got Alu now. They've actually lost all three with Alu. I think it's like it's like NIP is trying to change stuff all the time for Fnatic, and no matter what they change, somehow Fnatic's coming out on top here. Yeah, I don't know what they can do really. Maybe they should just. I think they're just playing too loose versus Fnatic. They just have to answer because if you want to play the like individual style, it's really hard to do that versus Fnatic because their players are they just aim better than yeah. NIP. And that's like, it's, it's new to NIP. NIP is just used to, okay, we can just play our standard style. We will win the like 3v3s. So we'll just go for yeah. the even trades. And versus Fnatic, it doesn't work because like, just look at like Crimson Ulfmeisters, these games, like they're just out aiming. NIP. Well, you saw in that, sometimes Nip would get in like a four on three or a four on two, yeah. but then two kills from the Fnatic guy, it suddenly evened up. And 
that situation where it's like, oh, they're going to win this round now. You, you, you're actually not so sure anymore. In fact, what's crazy is Nip guys used to get annoyed when I used to say the Nip Magic thing, that they always won every 2v2 and 3v2. Actually, that's the thing in the last month, month and a half, where they played these last four tournaments where they don't win those anymore. Actually, those are the rounds where they seem to fall apart. Yeah, I, I completely agree. Okay. So as far as, um, uh, so as, far as things go for uh, NIP at the moment, I mean, I was, I was saying to uh, Robin earlier that, I mean, they, they know when to peak usually. Like NIP can usually will reliably peak into the uh, later into the tournament. We're going to have a situation where by NIP will be ag up against Immunity today. I don't think they're going to be too worried about that match. And I don't think anyone would ever expect Immunity to win that. Of course, upsets can always happen, but this should never that should never happen against no. NIP. So if we assume that NIP are winning this match, they're going to be up against you know a, a, lot, of the, a lot of these awesome teams. So we don't know who's going to qualify between Na'Vi, TSM, and Virtus Pro just yep. yet. So... How do you how do you feel like the teams are shaping up on land at the moment? Do you feel like this this result from NIP here really tells us anything or Well it's true that they usually play better in the later stages of the tournament, but the teams they usually play bad versus in the group stages is usually like a lesser team. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they usually give like good teams a good fight, but I'm just surprised it just looked so weak compared to like how they usually play. So, Thorin, like, who would you ha have at the moment as uh, one of your favorites for the tournament? I know, uh, you know, uh, uh, ranking-wise, yeah. Fnatic are going to be number one. But as far as how the play is, has progressed so far, what do you think? I think I've still got Fnatic. They've looked, they've looked pretty impressive so far. And more impressively, okay, against Liquid, they just dominated CT sides and Liquid couldn't do much. But against Nip, it was actually terrorist play that got it done. Whereas we, we think of Fnatic as, like, they're the ultimate CT team. They win all, all the CT rounds, you know, so... TSM, eh, they looked a bit shaky against Na'Vi because obviously TSM were the ones where you're thinking, okay, in the rankings, Fnatic's the top, Envious isn't here. But then TSM's the team where because they had such a crazy performance at the CCS, well, if they come in in that form, maybe they're going to kind of like turn their fortunes around. They're going to become the new top team. That's not quite so sure yet, actually. So I actually hope at some point in the tournament, whether it's a semi or a final, we get to see TSM versus Fnatic again. I want right. to see a rematch of that final because the way Fnatic's playing now and the way TSM's playing now, it's going to be a lot more close, I think. Whereas... If you remember in that tournament, amazingly, TSM won something like four maps out of five against Fnatic, which is it's kind of incredible that someone could do that. So I want to see, can they do it again? Yeah, uh, Bjorn, you're telling me about how you feel like TSM are, are potentially basically the best team. So yeah, well, uh, maybe not the best team, but the best team if you just look at how they right. play the game. And like there's other aspects of the game, like if you choke and like you okay, okay. know <laughs> of choking and like just having sick individual play. Mm -hmm. But just the way they go around, like just playing rounds, how they ha handle their economy. I think they are the best team in the world, but those other aspects, it's what have like cost them tournaments and what actually makes them not being the best like complete team right. in the world. So do you guys have any quick thoughts uh, about uh, who will be the, the biggest uh, complica complication for Fnatic on their path to the final as they are essentially the favorite? I mean, all, yeah, on the one hand, if you're going with that kind of storyline, TSM makes sense because They've just beaten them recently. If like, I have to prove that they can beat TSM now, this new look TSM with a different style. I think a really interesting one would probably be Na'Vi, if Na'Vi was to play them, because it's been a while since I, I think I've seen Na'Vi play them in a best of three. And this is the new Na'Vi with Flamey. We haven't seen that match up. And so Na'Vi is a tough task for anyone. The, the, the maps they're good on is weird. Their playing style's kind of counterintuitive. So I'd love to see that particular match. I think that's like, the, for me, TSM is probably the matchup I want to see. Like I think that's those could be like the two best teams in the tournament. But I think Navi is like the dark horse who could give Na who could give Fnatic an unexpectedly really good game. And then in terms of the fact that NIP is down there, and the three teams we know they can face are all teams that are now around their level. I think NIP, no matter who they play, that can potentially be a very good series. All right. Well, we do have James Duffield, Duffield down there with an interview ready for us with Olaf Meister. Let's see what Olaf Meister has to say. Olaf. Firstly, congratulations. Um, when you were going into this match, when you're playing people like NIP, guys like NIP, you play you know, week in, week out. What, what do you guys have to do to mix, mix your game up so that they don't expect what's going to happen? Well, it's kind of kind of hard to mix it up because you have, we have faced them like, I don't know how many times. So we have done like every different thing. So we, like, you know how they play, but you also know that they know how you play. So you try to like, if I usually do this, maybe I would do this this time and even do like, if I usually do this, uh, I would do something. Yeah. And uh, I don't mean, I mean, this time I feel like we just out aimed them. Was, that was the, like, the, the main point. Everyone in our team hit their shots and just yeah, went nuts, especially Crims. So talk us through Mirage. How did you, how did you guys uh, go into Mirage? And is, was it just a case of you 
out shooting them or, or did, did the tactics uh, make any play there? Uh, most all just played like if someone had a good spawn and wanted to do something or someone wanted to do something in a round we just played around that like if Flusha wanted to go up slope on A he want, and kill someone we just like yeah if he does that I'm gonna go like maybe I go rush connector to help him out and stuff like that because everyone was feeling uh, hot and everyone was like I'm gonna kill this guy they were like I think the confidence was really good for us on this match and I think that was one of the keys you talk about feeling hot um, what is it gonna take for a team here to beat you? To be better than us. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Um, right now, today, we felt really good, but um, it's just one game. We need to be focused on the uh, next game and play as good as this. And if you do play as good as this, I don't see that anyone there, can beat us. Is there any weaknesses that you can you feel like you've got at the moment? Nothing I want to say. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair enough. So, if name one team. Is there a team still in the tournament that you feel like could could breach your team? There are, there are three, uh, like NAP can breach us and Virtus Pro, TSM and Navi can breach us, of course. They are really good teams. Then you don't know about the other teams, but uh, those teams are like, I feel like the top right now is really, really strong. It, it has never been like so many teams on a top level in CSGO before, so that's good for the, for the scene. It was really interesting to watch you here. I was standing behind you and watching you play. You, you all seemed really calm today. Like, uh, and like earlier on, we saw the Americans and Australians all shouting and like screaming calls and making loads of noise. But both, both of yourself uh, and NIP, really calm and r really relaxed. Like, what's the atmosphere like in in the team right now? It is what it looks like. It's really calm and we we feel good. But like, it can be both in a, like. They're shouting. I don't know if that's good. It can be good if the other team gets like frustrated. But for me, if someone was shouting that much in my team, I would just get stressed. Stressed, and uh, I don't know if it's good or bad. We like it calm. <laughs> well, let's hope you can keep calm for the rest of the uh, the tournament. Thank you for chatting to us. Thank you very much. We're back. Right. Hi guys. <laughs> We're back. <laughs> we did not do anything. All right. So. Had some words from Olaf Meister. They're obviously very, very confident. And the Olaf Meister is always very, very confident. And he has every right, right to be so confident. So this Fnatic are, of course, an amazing team. And they're feeling great today. I they? like the part. You said he felt confident. But he was like being trying to be humble. Like, you know, all the t lots of teams can beat us in this tournament. Navi, TSM versus Pro. But you read between lines. But, but it's the way that when he <laughs> asked him, like, oh, like, you know, uh, you know, what would someone have to do to beat you? And he was like, <laughs> to beat us? Oh, oh yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> probably yeah, play very well. Like, uh, oh, you, Sue's question, yeah. Okay. yeah. Exactly. Okay, like, guys. He gave it away, you see. His, his body language betrayed him. Much like when I'm talking to you, DDK, you know, you try to put up this front, like, you know, calm, cool, collected customer. But when I throw those shots at you, like, oh, that, that stings a little bit. Ah, and another dart. Oh, now the poison's <laughs> working its way through my blood That's exactly what it sounds yeah. like. Ah, ah, ah. That's, yeah. that's, that's, no, that's, like, that's completely accurate. Ooh, another one. Throw me another one, Lord. But Thorin. I can take a beat, yeah. Thorin. Well, I'll get out that scepter. I'll bash <laughs> you with my analysis. Oh, yeah, it'll be a metaphor for what goes on on this desk. All right, I guys. Rule with that scepter. So, I don't imagine you'll have any. Well, I, I can. Okay, I'm gonna have. To, I'm gonna ask this, right? Yeah. Any thoughts on immunity NIP before we? Uh, uh, yeah. I'd please hurry up, Nip. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Two zero. That, that quick. Thanks. Quick and painless. <laughs> yeah. You know. Listen, when you're gonna when you're gonna execute someone, it's not polite to draw it out. <laughs> like you remember that scene in like uh, Braveheart where he was like goring him and cutting him, and he's like, oh, "Mercy, mercy!" Yeah, just have mercy, Nip. Just like quick yeah. and painless, sort of like when they release that gas when they put you in that tank in America when you're on death row. So immunity's on death row, <laughs> oh not God. the cool rap <laughs> label from the '90s, but real death row. So just end it quick and let's get to the next series, which is gonna be the semi final. Well, it'll actually be the next group, but you know. Yeah, well, I guess Thoughts? I have to put it more humble, okay. I think. NIP is going to win 2-0 pretty comfort comfortably. So. All right, that's humble. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Robin, uh, what's you, you have something a little bit more heartwarming to say as opposed to what just came out of Thorin? Uh, no. <laughs> 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 right. Not, I mean, okay, well, I mean, look at it, right? It's, just, it's the same of thing course. as Fnatic versus uh, Liquid. I, I, yeah, sure. Immunity did uh, play decently versus NIP on Dust 2. <laughs> I have a hard time seeing that's going to happen again. All right. Thank you they very much. They will win. Uh, NIP. Thank, thank you, guys. That was a very hard <laughs> question <laughs> for you guys <laughs> to answer. Yeah. But uh, I think we are going to take a quick break. Whilst we set up the next match, which will be NIP and Immunity. Of course, elimination match for Immunity. If NIP win, they're going to go through. So, guys, stay with us here on Face It TV for more from the Face It League Land Finals. <laughs> 